podcast. My name is Cheryl and this is Cappuccino Crafts. That's what I call my podcast and my username on social media, well the social media that I'm active on, which is Instagram, Ravelry, and recently Goodreads. Um, my username is cappuccino136 and I will have that spelled out and other show notes uh, under the video in the information box. Uh, click on the down bar to show all the notes. Um, I'll put things about yarns, patterns, um, things that I talk about, books, authors, TV shows or movies or other uh, things that I reference that I think that you might want to um, be able to look up and get more information about yourself. I'll put those in the show notes and I hope that they're helpful for you. Um, I am not putting links so you won't be able to, to click on links from the show notes but I hope that's all right. Um, if you really, if it's really important to you to have the links there, then um, let me make a comment under the video and and request that I add links um, and that you that you really really want them, um, and then uh, I I might I might be able to make that work. Uh, so, I, I please get yourself a beverage, um, any beverage of your choice. Um, if you need a little snack, that's great too. Um, grab your yarn, your needles, your hook, um, and let's have a little crafty chat time together. Um, and I do, at the top of this, want to say, um, after kind of all the kind of dramatic things and kind of political things um, that uh, have been going on in our crafting community and that I've been, made comments about in my in my videos recently. Um, I'm really pleased to say that um, I haven't had to to delete any comments so far um, and I hope that continues but uh, the the reaction and the comments that I have gotten have been very yeah have, have been good um, of course some you know dislike you know thumbs down that's fine <laughs> thumbs down is great yeah, that's fine. That's perfectly good. Um, and I expected that. Um, and that's great. But no, um, no trolls have come around taking the opportunity to be really hateful and terrible. Um, nothing like that at all. So um, that's great. I, I hope that that continues. Um, but I am going to keep, right now, the comments for some of the videos are set to hold. Hold all the comments for approval. Um, and so far, I've been able to approve everything. Um, and haven't had, haven't had any big problems. So, uh, you guys are great viewers. I'm... Yeah, you guys are great viewers, so of course. Um, anyway, that said, now, uh, 
this week has definitely been much less dramatic uh, that way. Um, and so I've been back to reading. I'm reading again. Yay! <laughs> Making progress on projects. And it's been a pretty in here at the house. Um, I live here with my parents that who I um, take care of. Um, they just need assistance. Um, and I, I'm here for them. And we have our, our cat Stella. And uh, we've had a pretty good week here, too. A uh, pretty uh, routine in most ways. So pretty smooth. Um, so I hope that your week has been uh, calmer. <laughs> I hope you've uh, been doing well and you, are, you and your families and any of your pets and everyone is doing well. Um, yeah, and so projects, I have a finished scarf. I'm going to actually show you in this video so that you can see it. In my last video, I did such a terrible setup for the camera. The scarf never even appeared in the frame at all. Yeah, I, I really am going to try not to do that ever again like that was way too close and watching it was a little uncomfortable so I'm sorry about that um but yes this blue sky hug scarf which was in a, a kit from Amanda Bloom's little box of crochet which I received as a part of a swap when I did Fibershare last year. This kit was wonderful. Um, it was beautifully put together. I really enjoyed working on this crochet pattern with some very fine cotton crochet thread. And um, for the thread, it was a big hook because you really wanted that open, open, lacy feel. So that took a little getting used to, to get a consistent gauge using, um, using such a big hook with such fine thread. But uh, once it adjusted to it, it went really well. And I have woven in the ends and blocked it. And I love this scarf. I think it's so beautiful. And yay, I'm happy to be able to wear it and to be able to actually show you now in this video. I hope you got a good look at it. Um, anyway, so that was a big finish and coming close to a finish. Getting so close. I have... This is the one side of my summer top. The first side I did with kind of a scoop shaping. And then this is the piece I just finished. For my... This has a v-neck shaping. And sleeves both sides are matching as far as that and um they this is a top that i really improvised and made up as i went along which uh was fun and i enjoyed doing that um i found a pattern a lace chart that's the the in the center of each piece you know there's that lace and that came from a chart that is in the Vogue ultimate knitting book 2018 uh, fully revised edition and in the lace section this chart is used as an illustration for how to read lace charts um, but it's a full chart and fully functional so 
I thought the lace looked pretty and I wanted to try it and I thought it would be really good for this top which it was I love that lace pattern they did not give a name to the pattern it's just kind of it's just a chart with no name no number just like here's your example chart <laughs> not even a example chart a because there isn't a b <laughs> but so it did not give the lace pattern any name so i can't tell you the name of that lace pattern but um that's where i got it the vogue ultimate knitting book the 2018 edition and so i have the two pieces ready to be seamed up the sides and seamed at the shoulders and then i'll be able to wear it which is so exciting so exciting um and most of the ends on both pieces have been woven in what who am i huh i know because i hate weaving in ends and i will not do it unless dragging and kicking my feet but i really wanted to be able to seam this and finish it sooner rather than later so i what uh, have been doing a quota system of weaving in two to three ends every day and that's how i got through weaving in the ends on the scarf because there were a lot with all the different color blocks and that's how i started and i'm almost completely done weaving in the ends on both of those pieces for the summer top and then it will be time to seam so um yeah that quota system has been working for me really well i've used it before when i've needed to and um, that's kind of what I do when I need to kick my butt into doing things I don't want to do. I wonder, do you have a system or a strategy that you use? Um, maybe a timer or maybe setting uh, deadlines in your calendar or um, I know, do you have a system that you use? to um, get yourself through some of those things that you procrastinate on. Um, yeah, I'm curious. Um, so I now have one fully active work in progress, which is these fingerless mitts this is the top the fingers go in here and this is the thumb hole right here these are being worked from the top down which i've never done i've never done mittens or fingerless mitts from the top down ever before so this is a little different and i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying it quite a bit these are the Camp Out Fingerless Mitts. It is a free pattern on Ravelry, available as a, a PDF download. Um, I will tell you the name of the designer, but I can't think of her name right now. Um, but it will be in the show notes, the designer's name. Um, it's, a, it's a good pattern. The yarn that I'm using is Noro Silk Garden. One ball for each mitt. Um, Noro, Noro does um, long striping sections, uh, long stripe repeats on their on their yarns. So that's why that they're these. Two balls are completely different colors. Um, I got this Noro Silk Garden in a drawing 
from Celeste Fole, who is the host of the Yarn to Table podcast, which is a wonderful, wonderful podcast. One of my, one of my very top favorites. I enjoy her so much. And she uh, did a knit along and I participated and I finished my project in time and was able to get it posted in the thread. So my name went in the drawing and I won the drawing. So that's where I got this beautiful Noro silk garden from. And I have never had any Noro yarn and I've never used Noro at all. And I'm enjoying this Noro silk garden quite a bit. It's a tiny bit thick and thin. It, um, the look of it is a tiny bit rustic because there's some silk in here, it does not feel scratchy or um, anything like that. It's got a nice feel, but it's not super like soft and super like lush like silk can be. Um, it is uh, wool and silk but it's lovely and it's got almost well anyway it's got the look of it is not perfect it's a little thick and thin it's a little rustic feeling the the look of it but it does it when you're wearing it or when you're knitting with it um, it is not rough or scratchy in the least it feels very nice and it's lovely to knit with and I love the colors. I love the colors. Um, so I'm excited to see what they look like when they're done. Now, I also just today, barely, I mean, I've got like a row and a half in Oh, and I'm in a little bit of a tangle. <laughs> I've got to un untangle this yarn from the needles. Okay. Here we go. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> you, you are so kind and lovely and patient. This is the beginning of a swatch. I'm swatching for my new big project that I am ready to start after I finish the swatch. I'll be ready to start. Um, this is going to be the Boxy by Hohi Locatelli, which is a really oversized drapey boxy sweater and the yarn I have I have some that I hand wound ready to go in the project and this is the yarn in the skein It is Dream and Color Smooshy, which I bought a long time ago, and the colorway is called Mild Tedium. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I love that it's got such a kind of sad sounding name. It's like, why would you name a beautiful color Mild Tedium? But it's perfect because Yes, the, the colorway is gorgeous. It's so beautiful, but it's also very muted, very quiet, very gentle color. So it fits that kind of mood of a mild tedium, kind of muted, a little bit grayed out and um, soft and quiet. It just like a rainy day in the Pacific Northwest, which is where I live. 
and I, the name, the colors, the whole mood of it, everything about it, I'm like, that is, that is a Pacific Northwest rainy day, and I need a sweater. I need a sweater to wear on a rainy day and have a cup of coffee or tea and look out the window and listen to the rain. That is my, that's my imagination of the, of the whole, the whole feeling, the whole image that this um, puts in my mind. And I love it so, so much. So this fall and winter, I'm going to have the perfect rainy day, cozy, cuddle up sweater. And I think I'm going to wear it so much um, for a long time. Yeah, so I'm really excited for this. And I, I just began this swatch. I've got it set up for Magic Loop on a ridiculously, ridiculously long cord. But this is a length of cord that I'm going to want when I'm doing the whole sweater in the round. So I'm like, I don't want to start with a little cord and then just for the swatch and then put on my really, really, really long cord. I'm like, I'm just going to deal with a ridiculous cord for the swatching and that's the cord that I'm going to need when I really do the project. And I'm, I'm just going to be able to go straight to that and not going to have to mess about with changing the, changing the cord out. These are interchangeable needles. Um, I have a set of Haya Haya Sharps, which I love. I love my Haya Haya Sharps. So here we are and I'm swatching in the round because a principle of swatching is to get a more accurate swatch you need to knit your swatch in the manner that you're going to knit the project. So if the project is knit flat you need to knit the swatch flat. And if the project is knit in the round, you need to knit the swatch in the round. Uh, it just, it makes it more accurate because when you're doing any stitch pattern, it you knit it differently when you're going back and forth in the flat than if you're just going in a spiral round and round. Um, so for example, if your sweater, this sweater is in stockinette, and when you're knitting stockinette flat, you purl one side, the back side, and then you turn to the right side, and you knit across the right side. And then you turn again, and you're purling along the back side. So you're doing knit rows and purl rows when you're uh, doing stockinette flat. When you're doing stockinette in the round, you're just going around and around in a spiral and you're staying on the same side. You're not knitting on the wrong side and the right side. So you're just knitting. There's no purls involved. To do stockinette in the round. So because your, your knit rows and your uh, purl rows can have a slightly different size because when you're knitting it's a little different motion than when you're purling and you're uh, your purling sometimes tends to be, for a lot of people, a little looser than their knit stitch. So if you're doing knit and purl rows back and forth, 
that can give you a slightly different gauge than if you were not doing any purling at all and just knit, 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 knit. So that's why if your project is in the round, you swatch in the round. And if your project is flat, you swatch flat. Now, I really only swatch myself for garment projects. I don't feel it's worth it at all for socks or shawls. I mean, I love big shawls anyway, so if my gauge is a little loose, my shawl's going to be bigger. And I'll, uh, now, you need to watch out for the yarn, <laughs> that you don't run out of yarn, because gauge can also make you run out of yarn if, you, if you're off. But, um, I really only swatch for for garments and that's that's it i don't for smaller projects or projects that are just don't need to fit anything particular and if they come out smaller or if they come out bigger that's just what it is and you'll still be able to use it um the shawl will still go around your neck even if it's a, you know, 10 inches smaller or 10 inches bigger. Um, so, yeah, I am getting ready to start this lovely, lovely mild tedium rainy day sweater oh, it's gonna be wonderful yeah so that's the crafting that's all the crafting and finally after weeks there is some reading to talk about what i know i'm finally back to to reading i am listening to Illumine Files, um, continuing that book as an audiobook. Tomorrow I'm going to take the uh, hardcover book back to the library. Um, but I have it on audio, on Audible as an audiobook. So I'm listening to it to continue it. And it is a science fiction adventure uh -huh with all kinds of crazy things in far, far, far flung space in the far future. Um, and it's got a lot of, a lot of exciting things and uh, a lot of suspense going on. There's the beginning of a war, uh, a corporate warfare going on in space in the far outer colonies and they're trying to escape from the big, um, anyway, so it, it's uh, it really engaging, exciting read, and it's in a fun format that I like. I, um, it is told, actually, in the form of a case file, like an investigation file. So there are interviews with witnesses. There are intelligence reports and um, copies of emails, or we call them email, anyway, copies of communications and different things that have been intercepted, and there's maps, and um, all put together in this uh, file portfolio. Um, and the audiobook is still... It, it's still easy to follow as an audiobook, though, even if you don't have the uh, different um, formats to look at in the in the text. You can keep track of, of what things are, and um, it still works as an audiobook. And they have a full cast for the different characters in the in the audiobook. So um, every character has a a reader, uh, an actor, 
and um, so it's a good listen uh, but it's also a, a good read in either format I would recommend it um, yeah the other thing that I'm back to reading again because I started it I know a couple months ago um, just a few pages like uh, the first chapter um, but here I pick this up again it is Summer Long, Summer Long by Peter S. Beagle. He's the author of The Last Unicorn, which is a fabulous book that I love. And I love the movie from the late 80s, early 90s. Okay, I'm not sure exactly when that movie was released, but um, yeah love this book so far I'm like two and a half chapters in now so I didn't pick it up a long time ago I didn't I haven't been reading it all week but I have picked it up and I'm like 30 35 pages in now and um things are starting to uh starting to get into the story but um it's an urban fantasy, I would say, Summerlong is. While Last Unicorn is like a full fantasy. It's set in like long ago, far away, mythological time. Uh, but Summerlong is very grounded in the present day in the San Juan Islands off of uh, the off of Seattle coastline um, so it's set in um, in Seattle because they go back they take the ferry back and forth so they work in Seattle they live on the island it's set in a very real present day world um, but there are um, mythological fantasy uh, things that pretty soon are going to start to come to the front. Not quite yet, but um, yeah, so it's urban fantasy. I am also going to be um, picking up Last Unicorn again to reread at the same time that I read Summer Long and kind of do them side by side, go back and forth between them, because I think they'll make a really nice pairing. I'm super excited about that. Um, it's been a long, long, long time since I read The Last Unicorn. Um, so I just was uh, longing for that and, and thought this would be a wonderful side-by-side uh, -side read. Um, I really enjoy Peter S. Beagle and if... Uh, if you enjoy the seed, but you have not read him yet, um, please go get The Last Unicorn or Summer Long. I think either one would probably be a good place to start. But um, yeah, if you're a fan of fantasy and you haven't yet read any of his, um, please do. I, I think you'd really, really enjoy it. He's a very good writer, and I like his characters a lot. And, um, yeah. So, that's reading. Now, uh, I've also been watching. Uh, I've been finishing because tomorrow, when I take the book back, I also have to take back the Handmaid's Tale DVD for season two. Yeah, not the current season, not season three. I'm behind. I'm just trying to get through, finish season two before I have to take it back to the um, library tomorrow. And uh, I just have, I have, I think, three episodes to watch. I think I'm going to watch two tonight and one tomorrow. Or maybe I'm just going to stay up and get through the whole thing tonight. We'll see how tired I am and see how it goes. But um, I love Handmaid's Tale. I love it, but I also um, 
it hits close to the bone. It really does with current um, current events and current politics and current everything. Um, so it is hard to to speed through it. So that's why I haven't. Um, I didn't finish it quickly. Although I'm ending it pretty quickly, but. Um, yeah, it hits close, close to the bone. Um, but it's so well done. So well done. Um, and at some point, I'm going to read the book. I have not read the book yet. Um, I'm probably not going to read it right now. It's probably it's after, I know, after some time, I'll go and, and do the book. Um... But yeah, and speaking of hitting close to the bone, I did try an episode. There's been a lot of buzz, a lot of people talking about the BBC uh, drama Years and Years as just a, another amazing British drama TV show. And it just, I know very recently, it came to be available on uh, American cable channel, I, th I think HBO. Anyway, it was a part of our cable package that we have here at the house. And so I'm like, oh, oh, I really want to check that out. I've heard so many amazing things about it and people are so excited. And yes, it is an amazing British drama. <laughs> so well done the cast is fantastic fan they've got some amazing wonderful cast put together for this and so well done but I alongside or right after Handmaid's Tale it's just too much <laughs> it's also very very close to the bone and hits hard to me so with with the current state of the world and current political events and political climate and current uh, issues current modern life issues that we're really paying attention to to these days it really hits those hard but it's uh since i'm just finishing Handmaid's Tale, that I couldn't have that at the same time. <laughs> no, I'm going to have to come back to that later. I'm not sure when. Uh, I'm going to need some time to rest for a little bit after Handmaid's Tale. <coughs> and then at some point, I would like to get back to years and years. Um, but I'm going to need a little break from that kind of topical current issues yeah yeah a little a little much right now so i think we've we've covered the crafting and the books and the the tv and i think we've come come to the close of of this this episode uh, any of you that are still watching <laughs> all the way to the end thank you really thank you and I hope that um, I hope that you are having a great week I hope that this week coming up is um, full of um, creativity and good progress on all your projects and that um, you continue to be well and your family uh, as well so um bye for now